Okay, so today I'm sharing some of the worst makeup I've tried in 2024 so far. I usually film these videos a few times a year. I mean, it's almost May and this is the first one I'm filming because to be honest, I've tried a lot of really great products this year. And sometimes I try a product and it doesn't work for me, but I can still recognize that it's a really high quality product. So those aren't the products I'm sharing in today's video. Today's video is all about products that I truly don't think are worth the money. Of course, we all have different skin types, different preferences. So there is a chance you love these products or they could work for you, but for the most part, I feel like these products either didn't live up to their claims, they just didn't perform well, and they weren't worth the money. So in today's video, I will share some alternatives. Hopefully that makes the video a little bit more helpful. I usually link alternatives in the description box, but I kind of want to talk about them and just share something that's like a similar price point that I think performs better that you could try instead. Okay, let's start with this product. I was actually convinced that I was going to love this. I purchased three different shades. And when it comes to new products, I usually purchase like one shade. And then if I fall in love with it, I might grab an additional shade, but I was just, I, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to love this formula. It's the NYX Duck Plump Lip Gloss. I love pretty much every NYX lip product I've tried. And to be honest, I love a lot of the aspects of this gloss. It's very smooth, so glossy. It looks really pretty on the lips. They have a beautiful range of shades. They have colorful shades, nudes, and I... Like I said, I thought it was going to be a favorite. The issue for me is this has ginger in it. So it actually feels really spicy on the lips. And if it gets on your tongue, it burns. I know some people love like that tingly burning sensation. They're big fans of like the Too Faced lip injections or any sort of lip gloss that does kind of infuse your lips with that plumping aspect. So if that's you, maybe this won't bother you. But to be fair, I don't really notice any extreme plumping with this product. The Too Faced lip injections. Like that's the product I always compare when I'm talking about a plumping formula because that actually works. It's a little bit painful, but it visibly makes your lips look fuller and larger. These don't do that because they're glossy. Obviously your lips are going to look really full, but that's kind of the case with a lot of lip gloss formulas these days. So if you aren't a fan of like that burning tingling sensation, instead I recommend trying this formula from NYX. This is the, this is Milky Gloss line. They do have a bunch of different shades, very similar to the Duck Plump. The difference is they have some sheer shades, which is kind of nice, but they do have some that are a little bit more pigmented too. So I'll swatch these for you just so you can get a feel for them. I really like this formula. I find it incredibly glossy, so smooth, very moisturizing. Honestly, I like this formula better than this. Even if this didn't have like that spicy ginger aspect, I would still reach for these. These are scented. They have a milkshake scent and it does kind of vary depending on which one you get. It's a really pleasant scent, but it is there just so you know. These are actually less expensive. Now these do come with more product, the Duck Plump. So obviously when you break it down like price per ounce, you, it might matter to you, it might not. It just kind of depends on personal preference, but I just wanted to throw it out there. I would also recommend this formula from LA Girl if you're looking for an even more affordable option. This is the Lemalicious Luminous Lip Gloss. This is actually made with vitamin E, argan oil, sweet almond oil. Again, it doesn't have that plumping aspect, but it does have really good pigment. It's really smooth, super glossy. So if you like a pigmented smoothing gloss, this is a really good alternative too. I do have one more product from NYX. I promise I don't have it out for NYX. I actually like a lot of the products they launched this year, but the Marshmallow Setting Spray was not one of them. I did try the Marshmallow Primer a few years ago, and I remembered that it had like kind of a sweet scent to it, but I don't remember it being this strong. This is such an intense, sugary cotton candy smell. It actually smells really good, and if this was a perfume, I probably would wear it because I do tend to love like really sweet, almost sickly sweet scents sometimes but not for my setting spray. Like when I spray this on my face, it feels like I'm just inhaling like a, it feels like I'm in a cloud of cotton candy and it's just, I can't escape it. You might like that. Maybe that actually sounds really good to you, but that aside, this isn't really a good setting spray. It doesn't do anything to extend the wear of my makeup. And in fact, I feel like when I do wear this, sometimes my makeup breaks down a little bit more quickly. It's not so noticeable that I'm like, oh, this destroys my makeup. It just doesn't work like a typical setting spray would. NYX actually has a really good setting spray. This one is just their matte finish makeup setting spray. And the packaging is so similar. Like even the claims are kind of similar. At first I was like, did they just add fragrance to it? But this one performs a lot better in my personal opinion. So I would recommend trying this one over the Marshmallow Setting Spray. If you want another alternative, the Milani Make It Last is a great option too. They're both drugstore brands. They work well to lock your makeup into place and they also work well to keep your skin matte throughout the day. 
Kind of along the same lines, I do have a makeup primer. This is from One Size. I love everything that I've tried from One Size so far. I've tried their eyeliner, their mascara, their setting powder. I'm currently testing out their setting spray, which is really nice. But unfortunately, this just did not work for me. And I, I really don't think it's worth the money because there are so many good alternatives that work so much better than this one. This one is the Secure the Glow Tacky Hydrating Primer. It looks interesting. I saw it kind of going viral on TikTok. I mean, anything that looks a little bit different tends to go viral on TikTok just for like the shock factor. But this is supposed to hydrate the skin and also lock your makeup into place. I didn't find that it really did either. It definitely has that thin, watery, almost serum-like texture. So when you're applying to the skin, it feels really refreshing and it initially feels like it is going to hydrate the skin. But once it dries down, my skin feels the exact same as it did before and almost not like matte, but like a little bit tight. So I don't really find it to be hydrating. And on top of that, there is like no gripping aspect to this. I tried this so many times with all different foundations, just trying to get it to work for me. And it didn't do anything to extend the wear of my makeup, no matter what I paired it with. So I really feel like I, I don't understand this. I don't get the hype surrounding it. I feel like it was just like an absolute fail for me personally. So I do have a couple of alternatives I recommend. If you just want the hydrating feel, I recommend the Smashbox Photo Finish Primerizer Plus. This is incredibly hydrating. It does leave your skin feeling smooth. So if you have extremely dry skin and you don't necessarily care about the tacky part, this is going to be the most ideal option for you. If you want something that actually locks your makeup into place all day and also leaves your skin feeling hydrating, hydrated, I do recommend the e.l.f. Power Grip. The only thing is this is definitely a thicker texture. It doesn't feel the same at all as this. One of the reasons why I think this might appeal to people is because it is so thin, it feels like you're applying a serum. This is quite a bit thicker, so you really have to work it into the skin, and I think the payoff is worth it because your makeup will not move and your skin looks so glowy and feels really hydrated. But if you aren't a fan of these super tacky, thick primers, this one, I guess it's probably the most similar. It's from Hard Candy, so it's really affordable. It's their Sheer Envy Hydrating Primer. It has a little bit of a thinner gel-like texture, and I feel like there's a slight grip there. So it's not as strong as the e.l.f. Power Grip. It's a little bit more subtle, but when I do wear this product, my skin does feel hydrated throughout the day, and my makeup stays in place a little bit better. So I feel like this is pretty close, but it performs a lot better in my opinion. The only thing is this isn't quite as accessible. I've gotten mine from Walmart, or that's where I get hard candy, or I've ordered directly from their website, but I do recommend trying this instead if you're looking for something that kind of has the same claims as this. Another hydrating product that let me down is this one from Fenty. This is the Wear Even Concealer. I will say out of everything that I'm sharing in today's video, this is one that I know people do like. So obviously, like I said in the beginning, there is a chance this could absolutely work for you. But every time I use this, I just wish that I used something different. And I had high hopes for this. Initially, I wasn't going to buy it because at the time when it launched, I was just kind of, I knew that I had a lot of concealers I loved. I tried a couple of new launches from last year, but it was getting so many good reviews. So again, it could definitely work for you. But every single time I use this, I feel like it looks a little bit cakey and heavy on any dry areas on my face. And it's meant to be a hydrating concealer. If you have dry skin, I would love to hear your thoughts because my skin is more combo these days. And I will say it's actually very long wearing on the areas where I tend to get oily, which is like this area right here. I know for a lot of people, that's an area where they tend to be dry. I'm dry like right around my nose. And that's where this looks so heavy, really, really cakey. It probably is one of the most crease-proof concealers I've tried. I know every concealer claims to be crease-proof, but I have a lot of fine lines here. I have like a pretty big wrinkle here. And when I wear this product, it actually holds up really well throughout the day other than looking cakey in the dry areas on my face. If you're actually looking for like a very hydrating concealer, I do recommend the Tower 28. This one feels like a typical serum concealer. It has good coverage, it blends out well. It doesn't cling to any dry areas on my face. It's not the same texture as Fenty, and I wouldn't say it is quite as crease proof, but it's a lot more hydrating, so it doesn't look cakey or cling to any dry areas on my skin. I also like the Catrice True Skin if you're looking for an affordable alternative. Again, not the same texture, as Fenty, but it actually lives up to the Fenty claims better in my opinion. Really comfortable, again, very hydrating. It looks so glowy, so healthy on the skin. Not glowy in a shimmery way, glowy in like 
I drank a ton of water. My skin is super hydrated way. And again, this one's like $7, so really, really affordable. I love Flower Beauty, but unfortunately, this product did not work for me. This is the Cream and Chrome Eyeliner Duo. I actually have two. So initially, this feels fine when you're applying it to the eyes. I've been using these on the upper lash line because they are like your typical wooden pencil eyeliner. So they go on nicely. They're creamy enough that you can definitely blend them out and smudge them in, and you have time to work with them. But that's because they don't really fully dry down, and they definitely are not super long wearing. Whenever I use these to create a wing, the wing is gone by the end of the day. If I accidentally like touch my eye or rub my eye or, you know, my eyes get watery because they are prone to do that, this eyeliner completely comes off. These also do not apply well to the waterline at all. There's just really no color payoff when you're applying them to the waterline. So overall, I just found them to be an absolute fail. They're kind of expensive. I mean, they're $11, so they are drugstore priced, but I there are alternatives that are less expensive. Actually, every eyeliner I'm sharing in today's video as an alternative is less expensive. These are dual-ended. I like that because I don't always go through like a full navy eyeliner or a full silver eyeliner. Liner, so it's kind of nice to have two options, but the actual quality just isn't there. So I do have a few that I recommend instead. If you're looking for a good waterline eye pencil, the ColourPop gel liners are my absolute favorite. These stay in place on the waterline so well. I'm wearing the silver one today. This one's in the shade Kicker. It's so vibrant. These are really, really creamy. And if you tried these when they first launched years ago, I recommend trying them again because a few years ago they redid them and I just feel like the quality is a lot better. Now I don't typically use these on my upper lash line because they are breakable. So if you apply too much pressure, pressure, the tip kind of snaps off, which obviously is not ideal. So I do think these are actually best for the waterline, but I did want to give them as an option. Now on my upper lash line, if I'm creating a wing or even if I'm tight lining, I'll use one of these two formulas. So Essence launched these a couple months ago. These are the Stay and Play Gel Liners. I really like these. They're very, very creamy. So they're great because you get good color payoff. And again, you can smudge them out, but once they dry down, they stay in place really well. So personally, I do find them to be very, very long wearing and they're super affordable. I think they're under $5. LA Girl has a really great option too. These are the Shockwave Metallic Liners. They're not quite as long wearing as Essence. I would say the Essence ones definitely stay in place a little bit better, but these are creamier. So if you want like that very creamy, smooth application, these are nice. I'll use them on the upper lash line or the water line. I did try a new liquid liner formula. I might've tried these at like the very end of 2023. These are from e.l.f. They're the waterproof inkwell eyeliners. I've been looking for a really good colorful liquid liner. I have a lot of colorful pencil liners, but sometimes I just want like a sharp wing that only a liquid liner can give. And when I want to add a pop of color, most of the time, these days, it will more so be like a pop of color as eyeliner instead of eyeshadow. So anyway, e.l.f. launched these and the swatches looked really nice, but the eyeliners themselves are just not as rich or intense. Like you have to go over the same spot like three or four times to get the right amount of color payoff. And even then they don't look great. They look a little bit streaky, uneven. They definitely apply better to just like a very light matte shadow compared to anything like I'm wearing today. They probably won't show up that well if you layer them on top of like an intense metallic shadow. They also don't stay in place well. They're not the worst in terms of longevity. Like I've definitely tried other liquid liners that don't last as long, but they're not going to stay in place if your eyes water. And my eyes are so watery, so that's why I always bring that up. If you have really oily eyelids, if you tend to rub your eyes, like these will be gone the first time you touch them or like within a few hours. I don't have a lot of good alternatives to share with you. In fact, the only other formula that a drugstore or affordable brand offers that I do like would be the ColourPop BFF liquid liners, but they don't have a ton of shades. Like I really want very specific shades and I feel like I haven't been able to find them from other brands. Colorful mascara is definitely trending again. A ton of brands are doing colorful mascara. So I really hope colorful eyeliners are next. If you are looking for a good liquid liner that stays in place better, these are nice. They just don't have as many colorful options as I want. So please let me know if you have any recommendations. Speaking of ColourPop, there is an eyeshadow palette that did not work out for me. This is the So Elemental palette. I think this is a stunning color story. I love it. I think it's really beautiful, very approachable for more of a colorful palette, but the quality just isn't there. It's not what I've ever 
it's not what I've expected from ColourPop in the past. I will say like a lot of their palettes over the last few years have varied in terms of quality, but I didn't expect this one to be as patchy as it was. The matte shadows were kind of difficult to blend out. They looked a little bit uneven. Some of the shimmers were kind of underwhelming. It swatches beautifully and I feel like I can make this work for me. Like in the end, the look will come together or if I'm using like one or two shades in addition to another palette, they do look really pretty on the eyes. But this shade has fallout, it creases, this shade's a little bit patchy, this shade feels a little bit dry. It's just, in my opinion, not worth the money. But I do feel like it's hard to find a good muted blue toned palette. So maybe this would appeal to you if you're really looking for like a very specific color story similar to this. I just think it's not their best work. I only have two other blue palettes in my collection and one of them is Blue Moon, which is obviously a lot more intense. This is an older launch. I feel like I should probably replace mine, but I don't wear blue as much as I used to. I loved this palette so much when they first launched it, but as you can see, it's more intense than this one. And then I do have this palette from Essence, which actually has some similar tones in it. This one is the Ice Ice Baby palette, and I feel like this one comes closer, but even still, like some of the matte shadows in here look a little bit patchy on the eyes. It's not the best six pan palette from Essence I've tried. So blues are a little bit more difficult. I know like blues and purple are notorious for being hard to formulate. They tend to look a little bit more patchy. I'm sure there are some indie brands out there that have created gorgeous, beautiful blue palettes. And I'm not super familiar with a ton of indie brands when it comes to eyeshadow because I just don't buy a lot of eyeshadow palettes these days. But if you have any recommendations for us, please let us know. Again, I won't say this is the worst palette to ever exist. I just feel like the quality is lacking and there are definitely other ColourPop palettes that perform better than this one. This next product is from CoverGirl. It is their Outlast Lip Stain. Honestly, when I first tried this, I was really shocked at the good reviews on this product because I, I just felt like it was so drying and so uncomfortable on the lips. When I use it as a typical lip stain, which is kind of the way that it's marketed, it looks uneven, it looks patchy. I have to go over the lips like four or five separate times to get a super even smooth finish. And even once it looks smooth and even on the lips, it starts to wear off pretty quickly and not in an even way. Like the center wears off first and then again, it looks, it just looks bad. Now I know some people like to use this as a lip liner. As a lip liner, it's not as bad. I feel like it definitely stays in place on like the outer edge of my lips better than it does the center. So you'll get longer wear out of it that way. And I do think it looks pretty if you use a color that's kind of close to your lip shade because it blends in in more of a natural way. So depending on the way you use it, it could work for you. I just don't recommend it as like a full on lip stain because it's uncomfortable and patchy and it doesn't last well. I don't have an alternative exactly like this to recommend to you because I haven't tried one of these marker type lip stains in years, but I do have an affordable lip stain. This is from Milani. It's definitely a different texture, a different concept. So this is the Color Fetish Hydrating Lip Stain. Now when you apply this to lip apply this to the lips, it has a glossy layer, a glossy finish. And then once that glossy layer wears off, you're left with a stain. So if you don't want the glossy layer, you can just wipe it off initially and you just get like that lightweight stain left behind. And the difference is this formula is a lot more comfortable. Like even once the gloss layer wears off, it's so lightweight, so moisturizing on the lips. Now, neither one of these is like an all day wear lip product. It's not going to stay in place as well as maybe some other options. I would say this one lasts maybe like six, six-ish hours before it starts to wear off and then I'll just reapply it. But I feel like that for me is fine because it is so, so comfortable. So a really good alternative, definitely not the same concept, but a nice, more affordable lip stain if you're looking for something from the drugstore. I picked up these lip balms from the Ulta Beauty collection. These are the Plumped Up Pout Lip Balms. The packaging is super cute. I love it. I think it looks fun. And honestly, I thought these were going to be a little bit more intense. They are sheer. I think they look really pretty when you initially apply them because they're like sheer, tinted, everyday natural lip balms. They feel really nice, but I would say after about 30 minutes, they just like completely dry out my lips. My biggest pet peeve when it comes to like a lip oil or a lip balm is something that actually leaves my lips feeling worse after it wears off. And that's definitely the case with these for me personally. They also have a cooling sensation. It's not painful by any means, but it is noticeable because these are supposed to be plumping. There's no plumping at all in my opinion, but they do have like that tingly feel on the lips. 
I just don't recommend buying these because there are so many good alternatives out there. These are $11, so they're really not even like the most affordable option. I think I got them on sale, but if you're looking for a product that has very similar claims that actually performs better, I recommend this formula from Burt's Bees. This is their Gloss and Glow Glossy Balm. I always mean to pick up additional shades and then I feel like I kind of forget about this product and then I go through a phase where I'm using it nonstop and then again I find I find something different but this is a really nice sheer shiny glossy lip balm that feels very moisturizing very light and I feel like that moisture actually stays once the product wears off. I have the shade Wine Wednesday which is really pretty and then I do really love the ColourPop Glowing Lips. These actually have a little bit more pigment. I fell in love with these when they first launched and I still think they're a really great option. They're basically like balmy slightly glossy lipsticks. They can be sheared out or you can layer them up to get a little bit more pigment. They're a little more customizable and again very very comfortable and they have a lot of shades to choose from. So I would go with these first. I think these are the best but this is a really good option too. Okay, last product that I wanted to share. I know that I've talked about some of these products in previous videos. I just always like to do like a full wrap up in case you're interested in hearing about the products that really didn't work for me after thoroughly testing them out. And I know I talked about the LA Girl Brow Ink. I thought this was going to be my number one brow pen. It looks so good. It has a, the perfect like tapered thin applicator. It goes on really nicely, but it dries out after like two weeks, which is just way too quickly. It comes with 0.015 fluid ounces. For comparison, the NYX one comes with 0.03, so it is about half the size of the NYX, and the Milani comes with 0.03, so same thing. But the NYX and the Milani will actually last me months. So this should, in theory, at least last like a month or two, but it doesn't. So I think there must be something wrong with the actual pen, like inside the pen, because it must not allow the product to flow through to the tip, which is so sad because this is the perfect tip for the brows. It's just so thin. It makes it incredibly easy to get a really natural look, but it just dries out way too quickly. So both NYX and Milani are really good alternatives. I mean, these are not so much thicker, like almost looking at them side by side, they don't look that different. It's just the LA Girl one is a little bit thinner, a little bit longer. So when you're using it, there's just like the slightest difference, but I do think it looks more natural overall, but it's not that big of a deal, that big of a deal. I'm definitely happy with NYX and Milani. I think they're both great options. I love them both. It just kind of depends on which brand you prefer or which one has a shade that will match your brows, but you really can't go wrong with either one of these. I just don't spend your money on this. You'll waste it because it dries out way too quickly and it only comes in two shades, which is a big con anyway. So those are the worst makeup products I've tried over the last few months. So let me know if you've tried these and if you've been able to make them work for you one way or another. I'm definitely curious to hear your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like hearing about products that didn't work for me, I'll link a couple of other similar videos on the screen for you. And thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. I'll see you very soon with a new video. Bye.